Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. It was actually a lot less scary when I was rehearsing in my room, like for the past several hours. <laughs> now that I see faces, OK? Uh, so a few words about uh, Neversoft. We started 12 years ago and uh, as a, a developer of uh, casual downloadable games for PC. And we have uh, more than 40 of them in our catalog. Uh, we are also distributors and publishers on the Russian market. And uh, right now, our major focus is uh, free-to-play games for mobile platforms and social networks. So I want to share our experience of what exactly we do to improve our games after the launch. And I hope that everybody here knows what a free-to-play game is, right? Well. <laughs> anyway, if you don't, you can go and watch a recent episode of South Park. I think they, <laughs> they nailed it. Uh, but you know, when I was preparing my presentation, I got this idea that um, working on a free-to-play game is a lot like you know, remodeling your house. You can never fully finish it. You will always f find something to add, to fix, to change, to break the wall maybe. And it also requires a serious thinking before you do something. Or you can get a result like this, for example. You know, that happens a lot. And um, like in a situation uh, with a house reconstruction, a lot of things are actually pretty obvious. You know exactly what should be done. But the problem is that sometimes we are, I don't know, we lack energy, we don't have time, we're just lazy, and we don't do it. Or if we do it, sometimes it doesn't work out the way it's supposed to be. So I think that I want you to know that I'm not going to tell you something which is going to change your life forever, or like you hear something that you completely change your business starting from tomorrow. It's not going to happen because the things I'm going to talk about are pretty simple. They're very obvious. But I want to share um, the examples of what needed to be done and what we did and the amazing results we got. And uh, I hope that even though you might have a completely different game, you can get inspired and uh, you know probably get some idea which will help you. So I grouped the examples, and the first group is analytics. Everybody knows that analytics is important. You have to analyze. But um, the problem is that many developers, especially some indie developers, are sometimes afraid of analytics because they think that the, it can steal the creativity and it's like they're so creative or that they have to need to have some master degree in analytics you know to do something the truth is that that analytics only helps you to smooth out the player's experience it can never substitute the initial idea of the game itself but it helps you to spot the problems and then solve them and the thing is that most of this is basic. Those are like basic numbers, and uh, all you need is common sense, you know, to, to see the uh, interconnections and to find the solution. So the first case study is um, about our social game. It's a combination of a farming game and a builder. It's, uh, don't try to read it, it's in Russian. <laughs> it's, uh, right now it's available on the three Russian social networks and uh, Facebook version is coming. It's one of our most successful titles. And um, so here was a task to cut the trees, the number two line. Uh, there were four types of trees in the game. So, but apparently it's, a, it's impossible to put all four of those trees on one small icon. So we put only one tree on the icon, but we meant that players have to cut all the trees they find. What happened? We saw a turn rate there, like 6% people did not understand what we wanted from them. So they cut the trees from the icon, and that, that was it. They were like, what do you want from us? Like, wha wha what's going on? So we said, OK, let's experiment. You know, let's try other trees. Maybe they will work better. So here you can see three other types of the trees in the game. And we tried them one by one. So what do you think? finally worked. Which three turned out to be better? Number one, number two, number three? OK. The correct answer is four. We tried all of them. None worked. But then we did a weird thing. To my mind, it's very weird. 
we put a tree which doesn't exist in a game, a palm, and people started to understand what we wanted. Probably they thought like, okay, there is a palm, there are no palms, okay, I'll try some other tree, and it worked, and then they cut all the trees they saw. So the lesson here is that you might think one thing, but players behave differently. And it's only due to analytics which can help you to see the truth, to, you know, to have this dialogue with them. So that's how we solve this problem and uh, decrease the churn rate. The second case study is about our mo mobile game. It's a match-free uh, combined with a builder. It's soft launched in Russia so far, but it's super successful. We launched it in the partnership with uh, VK.com. It's a like, Russian Facebook. Uh, in the beginning of July, they added games section to their mobile app. So basically, they uh, made those games uh, available for all their mobile users, which is now about, uh, I guess, 20 million people daily on iOS and Android together. And they only chose four games for the launch, and two of them were ours, and one of them was Gemilands. So <coughs> mobile app, game section, four games offered to players. And uh, we were in a great hurry because we needed to do it on time. And like, so we, we chose this cute character the girl called Jamie, we put her face on, a, on an icon and we launched the game like that. When we could finally breathe again after the release, we thought, okay, why won't we test different icons like we usually do? And uh, so there were created four of them and then we bought advertisement, like those were banners, and we targeted to our target audience and we looked at the CDR. So it turned out that the icon with gems had the highest CDR. And we, for the next update, we used this icon. What happened? What happened is that we saw a dramatically, our downloads increased dramatically. Of course, it wasn't just because of the icon. We did a lot of stuff as well. But uh, again, the main source traffic at that time was uh, this mobile app of pk.com, and there were only four games and those, they, they were icons, and basically those were links to the App Store and Google Play. And this is when the icon is super important. I think it was one of the keys uh, of our success. And the game is still, three months later, it's still in top three. It's higher than Candy Crush Saga or Jelly Jam or whatever, uh, Jelly Splash. And uh, we actually beat Candy Crush Saga in top grossing in Russia. So I'm very proud of that. The next case study is also about the farming game. So that's what happens to your plants when you don't come back on time. I never do. And, uh, you know, some people on the team, including me, thought that this must be very irritating for people. To, you know, to bring those plants to life, you have to buy water pots, magic water pots, because the setting is, you know, magic forest. So uh, <coughs> I said, like, you know what? It's so... It's so irritating, you know, to, to use those water pots. But before changing anything, we looked at the numbers. What we saw, the churn rate was, you know, not outstanding, was normal. But we saw that it gives us $100 every day. Please keep in mind that this is only one social network in Russia, and the game is available on three of them, and this is not Facebook yet. So I hope on Facebook there will be uh, more zeros. So the lesson here is that even if you have some idea of doing something, do not do it before you look at the numbers. They are very clear and trust them. The second group is uh, what you do after you analyze the statistics. So you listen to your players. This is very trivial, but still very true. Players is the most important thing you have. No game can be successful in any meaning of this word if you don't have players. So uh, actually here I have only one example, but it's, it's great. Um, case study number four. Um, there was a simple task to gather nine or 10 apples. You could get apples while cutting the trees or harvesting, you know, at your, um, near your house, like going to your neighbors. And um, the apple drop was, um, Apple dropped with a 30% chance. So P 
people started to complain and give us very negative feedback. They were like, what? Why? I do the same stuff again and again, and sometimes I get an apple, and sometimes I don't get an apple. What's wrong? Like, what do you want from me? Is it a bug? Like, wh what's going on? And um, we started to think, OK, who is our target audience? It's a farming game, right? It's uh, women 40 plus years old. If I was a woman 40 years old with family and several kids, and uh, let's imagine my husband comes to me and says, like, you know what? I can bring you $1,000 every month, or I can bring you $1,500 a month. Or, you know, sometimes it can be 700 or some months it can be even $50, but some months it can be $2,000. Like, what would you choose? No doubt, I would choose the first variant because the first option is better. If I have to be responsible for other people, I have to know that my kids, you know, have something to eat, they're not hungry. Of course, uh, stability is a key. I would prefer to have $1,000 every month, you know, and uh, plan accordingly. That's what our players want. They want to plan accordingly. They want to know what to expect. They, know they need to know what exactly they have to do. So what we did, we changed the apple drop up to 100%. So now, whatever you do, apples drop every time. At the same time, we increased the number of apples you have to get at the task, up to 500, 600, up to 1,000 apples. So you need to get 1,000 apples, and they drop every time. People were happy. They were thanking us. Well, there were like a couple of comments like, are you crazy? Like a thousand apples, seriously? But uh, most of them were like, OK, finally, now I understand what you want from me, right? And um, before, you could buy some apples, but nobody did it. Now, people started to understand that either they spend their time, hours, you know, gathering apples, or they spend some money. So we offered a sale. And uh, people started to buy those apples. They wanted to complete the task faster, and they bought the apples. So they were happy, and we got 120% increase in monthly revenue. This is a win-win situation. Players are happy, and developer is happy. And uh, I think that was, that was a very great finding. After you look at the numbers, after you listened to players, uh, you should always listen to your team members because sometimes they actually have bright ideas. Um, nobody knows your game better than you. It's a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. So um, the Jamilands game, when we launched it and people started to play it and we were climbing the tops and we're still there and like, we were very excited, we're still very excited. So we kept, ex mm, we kept discussing it in the office. We, you know, at night could email each other like, you know what, we should make this feature. Well, the problem is that there is like a three months plan, but no matter. <laughs> we kept thinking about new ideas about how to make the game better. And, um, you know, it's exciting, two million people playing, right? And once um, Jamiland's producer sent us an email, I don't remember why exactly, but he went on like, you know what, I play, this was my idea, then I played this game um, as a like, producer with all the cheats, then I played as a regular, so I played it like five times, all the levels, whatever, and he wrote the strategies. And it was a long email, like, if you explode two bombs, you get this. If you uh, manage to get three bombs, then you get a better score. But and then if you use a booster at this time, it gets like this. And, like and I was like, and there were like strategies for how to play a match-free game. And uh, that was exact my face when I got that email. <laughs> what? So how I play a match-free game. So I, I uh, combine three gems of one color, poof, they disappear. Then I combine three gems of another color. They disappear. That's how I play a match-free game. I had no idea there is so much behind that. Seriously, the gameplay is so deep. There is so much stuff behind just you know combining gems. But the problem is players do not know. 
<laughs> they do not know, they match, they match gems. So the lesson here is that that tutorial shouldn't stop after two or three levels after you explained how to combine gems or like do whatever core gameplay you have. The tutorial should be non-stop. And even if it's uh, 170 uh, level, whatever, give pieces of advice. That's what we're going to do in our next update. So Jamie is going to give these pieces of advice. And uh, after that email, when uh, you know, I said everything what I thought, the producer, I, I was like, I started to use those techniques and strategies, and it became to, it became to much more fun to play. So apparently, if you know how to play, and um, it increases the engagement, and it increases the retention, and it's just simply more fun to play, and that's what we all want for our players, right? Case study number six, um, going back to the farming game again. Uh, so, as any respectful farm, there are, at, 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 as at any respectful farm, there are animals, of course, and, um, well, I wish you understood Russian, because uh, those animals are, uh, have very fun names, they look fun, funny, and, um, well, players love them. And then our game designer had an idea, okay, people definitely love them, why won't we offer something unique, some exclusive animals? <laughs> Honestly, they don't add anything to the gameplay. So they are just just like the regular animals, but those are unique, and you can get them only on a time limited offer. So there is like okay, there is an offer you can get them, and the only way you can get is only if you pay real money, not in game currency. No, real money. And uh, people actually do that. People pay money to get those unique animals. They keep nagging, like, I want new animals. Like, give them to me. And it gives us up to 43% to the daily revenue when we do that. Just for, you know, some animals. And um, another important thing is that it's good to have something which can be purchased for real money only. Because when people visit each other, go to their neighbors, they see, OK, there is something that this person bought for real money. I'm not crazy wanting to buy some virtual goods. I'm not crazy wanting to, s to spend my real money on some you know, animals in the game. So they think it's OK. Nobody's going to blame me if I do that. So it, it's good to set an example so that people can see that it's OK to spend money. And that's what we actually want. The last group is about competitors. Well, of course, it's obvious that uh, before starting anything, you have to make a market research. Well, I hope you do that, right? <laughs> you look at you know what's popular, if this is popular, and then why, and uh, then you make your own game. But uh, when the game is released, you shouldn't stop doing that, because competitors are those great people who actually think about the same stuff. They think about how to improve their games. And sometimes they think faster. So it's OK to use their you know, successful findings, their successful experience. And it's not OK to repeat their mistakes. So just look around uh, and uh, be careful. So what um, we did with the Gemilands, so we looked at the metric games, which are close to ours uh, in the top. And uh, we noticed that while we offer extra moves only after the level is failed, they offer you know, extra moves while a person is still playing. So we decided, OK, why not try it? And uh, the last update was uh, there is this plus button. You can add extra moves while you're playing. It gave us 7% seven seven more spendings on extra moves. And just, you know, it was very simple. Case study number eight is, uh, it's classic now, I guess. Uh, so, but we only made it like three months ago. So when my friends do not come back to the game, they are showed as if they are sleeping, the sleeping Z. Uh, sign. And when I put my cursor on them, 
there is a button to wake them up. I think, <laughs> I personally think it's very cute. So when you do that, there is a message sent to them, and is, as a result, 6% of players come back. So as I said, it's classic. It's like, this is obvious, this is what you have to do if you have a social game, right? But you'll be surprised if you look around, if you look at the games which are out there, you'll see that not all of them have this feature. While you know, basically doing nothing, you get the players back all the time. And the last case study, not about the games itself, themselves, but um, you know, there are a lot of people who tell you obvious stuff. And you are like, I know that. Why, why is she telling me that? Like, it's, it's obvious, like, right? But um, the problem is that until you listen to someone, and you never know, right? If you do not communicate with people from the industry, you have no idea about what's going on. Sometimes you listen about some other experience, but you can get your own idea, you know, completely different, but you can get inspired. And that's why people go to the conferences like Casual Connect, for example. That's why you are here. That's why we go to the parties at night, you know, not to drink, I hope, right? Uh, you go there to network. So uh, that's it. We have time for a couple of questions. Please wait for the microphone for the questions. Thank you. Hi, Alex Gellas, your rabbit. First of all, thank you very much for the lovely presentation. It's great. I have two questions. Question number one, how do you, how do you communicate with your players? Okay. And question number two, uh, how do you collect statistical information about their behavior? Okay, thank you. Uh, well, we have uh, official communities on our so social networks. So the farming game, it's on the social networks, of course. Uh, there is a community when people share their thoughts, uh, post their comments uh, with the mobile game as well. As I mentioned, we launched it together with uh, VK.com. So there is an official group on VK.com. And we are actually working on um, uh, stimulating our players to go there. So right now, there is nothing in the game which you know makes them go there, but I think it's important if we gather them in one place and then they discuss. So we, we have a community manager who makes sure that there is always updates in the group and uh, where people can complain. And then the important thing, actually, a <laughs> case study. Try, if you are not a community manager yourself or if you are not uh, at the support team, try not to be an administrator at that group. N don't let people to see that you are an administrator of that group. Because I, I was in, in, in our groups for like several years. I still have hundreds of unread messages. And people writing me, okay, my chickens disappeared. What should I do? And, uh, and stuff like that. So it, it's not fun. So let like, you know, professional people uh, take care of that. And um, the question about uh, statistics, uh, it's actually a very good question <laughs> and a uh, very important one because there are some uh, ready solutions on the market. Uh, we used several of them, but to be honest, we're not satisfied with uh, most of them. So there, are th there was uh, uh, analytical solution contagion, now Upside. Uh, we used them for a year. Uh, well, we found out that uh, not all of our needs are met, so now we tried apps flyer, we tried adjust. Adjust actually showed pretty good results, especially with the uh, ad campaigns. But uh, now we decided that we need our own analytical solution. And this is what you need if you are serious about what you do. And if you have not just one small game, but at least several, or like one huge game, that's what, that's what better, to have your own analytical solution. And we, I think uh, we started to use it in our social networks just recently. Time for one more question? Run, well, if you're shy, I'm sure Julie will be here afterwards to answer any questions for you. It's okay. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you.